All right, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sing with us and praise him today. He's worthy. Marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, how I want to be in that number, yeah, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the sun refuse to shine, Lord, when the sun refuse to shine, oh, how I want to be in that number, yeah, when the sun refused to shine, oh, when the trumpet, hey, sounds its call, oh, when the trumpet, Lord, sounds its call, oh, how I want to be in that number, yeah, when the saints go marching, saints go marching. Saints go marching in da 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 da. Amen. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the rose and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God is Tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, he speaks and the sound. Of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody oh, that he gave to me within my heart. say amen and in the time that we're living in today people need to know that Jesus is alive and that he's coming back and that there is something to hold on even amidst this coronavirus and that is Jesus you can call on him he's the same yesterday today and forever Lord you promise 
There'd be nothing that we couldn't make it through. And in my heart, I know your word is true. It's just these waters that I'm sailing through right now are mighty rough. Could you wrap me in your arms and hold me up? Hold me up so I can sing. I've been trying hard to fly, but I can't find my wings. I am traveling through a time where all I had is not enough. I need to hear your voice and feel your touch. Could you wrap me in your arms and hold me? Oh, yeah. Lord, I know I'm not the only one whose heart is hurting now. There are others, Lord, who need to feel your power. And if anyone knows, if anyone knows how we feel, Lord, yeah, so please come and do what only you can do. Hold us up so we can sing. We've been trying hard to fly, but we can't find our wings. We are traveling through a time where all we have is not enough. We need to hear your voice and feel your touch, Lord. Could you wrap us in your arms and hold us up? The Lord God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So whatever he did for Paul and whatever he did for David, he'll do it for you also. Hang on in there. Keep praising him. I am traveling through a time where all I have is not enough. Need to hear your voice, Lord, and feel your touch. Somebody out there. Could you wrap me in your arms? Lord, hold us up, hold me up. Hold me up, Lord. Amen. Well, uh, good morning, church, and welcome back to another uh, Mizpah service uh, where we are asking the Lord to watch between you and me uh, as we are uh, separate and absent from, from one another. Uh, and actually, today is the first Sunday where we are meeting back together for an in-person uh, service, and we are uh, planning on having a, a Lord's Supper service today. But for those uh, that are unable to attend the in-person service, uh, I wanted to at least have something uh, available uh, for, uh, for you on uh, this Sunday morning. And so that, uh, that is what this uh, recording and this, this message is for. Now both the messages today, the one that will be f uh, the in-person service for the Lord's Supper as well as uh, this, uh, this one here, uh, they both come from the same text uh, in Revelation chapter uh, 19 and just three verses in verses 7 to 9. 
Uh, and though both messages are from the same text, yet I think each one is going to have a, a little bit different of, a, of, of an emphasis. And so uh, regardless of which one you attend or watch, there'll be a little bonus material uh, for, uh, for you, and I hope uh, you receive a blessing uh, from, for, from the Word of God today. So if you have a copy of your scripture, uh, I invite you to turn to Revelation uh, chapter 19. Uh, I will read here just a little bit, just three verses, verses 7 to 9. And these verses here uh, reference the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, and the wedding supper of the Lamb is an exciting, is an exciting and a very intriguing subject matter, uh, but it is also uh, a matter that brings with it uh, a little bit of debate uh, he here and there. But, but for this message uh, today, I just want us to, to think about uh, this under, under three headings. First of all, the, the interpretation of this wedding supper of the Lamb, lamb of, of what is it, and also and the anticipation for this marriage supper. And then I also want to point out a great distinction uh, between this supper and another supper. So uh, we'll look at the interpretation, some anticipation, and then a great distinction. And so let me just read these three verses from Revelation 19 in verses 7 to 9. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. And then the angel said to me, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. And let's uh, take an occasion for some prayer. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for your uh, word uh, this, this day. Uh, Lord, might we be encouraged uh, by it as we uh, eagerly wait for that day that we will see you uh, face to face. I ask your blessing upon our, our time. Uh, might you be glorified and might your people be edified. Amen. Uh, well, to start off here and, and uh, thinking about the interpretation here of the wedding, uh, the wedding supper of, of the Lamb, we might think uh, just, just some questions here. You know, what is meant uh, by this marriage supper? I mean, what, you know, what is being uh, conveyed here by, um, uh, by this term, the wedding supper of the Lamb? What is the main point of this of, of, of this passage and, and also who are the the individuals here I mean who who is the bride that is in this uh, uh, wedding supper as well as the invited guest uh, we know it's the wedding supper of the lamb and so we know who the lamb is it's the Lord Jesus Christ but but who specifically is the bride and then who are these ones that have been invited to this uh, wedding this wedding supper are these the same people the bride and those invited or or are they are they different people all uh, all together and and also uh, another question would be how much weight uh, should we give to ancient Jewish wedding culture, and how much weight do we give to it on how we interpret these verses in Revelation chapter 19 in verses 7 to 9 that deal with this wedding supper of the Lamb? And, and, and I, I mentioned this ancient Jewish wedding culture because I was taught of you uh, that placed a really a pretty heavy emphasis on Jewish wedding culture as a way to interpret specifically the, uh, the, this passage as well as a many, many end time events. And really that can be a, a very uh, a helpful tool uh, in maybe understanding what, uh, what the scripture teaches us. So when you think of ancient uh, Jewish uh, w wedding culture, it was, uh, they were arranged marriages. The father would, would choose a bride uh, for, uh, for his, his 
son, uh, and eventually, as, as time went on, uh, eventually the, uh, he would present this b- betrothed woman, this betrothed bride, to his son, and then a bride price would be paid, and they would enter into a, an engagement period, which was a, a binding a, a, a covenant period between these two that were going to get married. Uh, then the, the son, the one who was g- going to get uh, married, would uh, leave and go and prepare a place for his, uh, for his betrothed bride. Uh, generally, he might go back to the family compound and uh, 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 build, build a place to where they could have a, a home together. And then, then when, when that was done, then he would go back and he would uh, go and get his bride uh, and then would uh, commence a a marriage feast, generally of, of seven days, and you would have this glorious uh, a, a, a wedding ceremony between uh, the son and the chosen betrothed bride. And, and I think you can see how this, uh, kind of generally how the ancient Jewish uh, wedding, uh, wedding culture was, how it could be very applicable uh, to what we read uh, in, in the Gospels of our so great a salvation. Because it was the Father that uh, chose before the foundation of the world uh, a people, a bride for his Son, the Lord Jesus, uh, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and eventually he, he presented these people to his Son. Uh, the Lord Jesus speaks of those that were uh, those that the Father had given uh, to him. And it was the Lord Jesus who pray, who paid the bride price for his betrothed bride. He, we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And it was on the cross uh, that uh, our husband, if you will, paid the bride price. And, and then after the bride price was, was paid and our Lord's glorious of the resurrection... Uh, He goes to prepare a place for us. You remember that he told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, will believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms, and I go to prepare a place for you. And he didn't just go to prepare a place, but eventually when the place is completed, then he comes to get his bride. He says, if I go to prepare a place for you, then I will come again and receive you to myself. And then when that happens at his glorious, uh, 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 glorious second coming, we have, I think, this marriage supper of this lamb, the, the marriage feast that we read here in Revelation 19 for the wedding. The wedding of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. Uh, and the angel said, write this, blessed are those who were invited to the wedding a supper of, uh, of, 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 of the Lamb. And so you can see that it is really kind of helpful uh, to have this backdrop of this ancient Jewish uh, wed- w- w- wedding culture. And, and so these cultural elements are important to kind of help us uh, help us understand uh, some, some of these, these passages. They can apply very, very nicely. But these cultural elements are, we have to remember that they are subordinate to Scripture and to the immediate context. Uh, cultural details of Jewish w- w- wedding culture, I think, can be pressed a little too far. I mean, I was, uh, in fact, I was taught that because a lot of these ancient uh, Jewish weddings, they last for, for seven days, and so the marriage supper of the Lamb, it is going on for seven years in heaven during the seven-year tribulation. And so that's, that's when the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, when I was taught, when it uh, when it took place because uh, that uh, fit nicely into the seven days of a, of, of, of a, a wedding feast. But, but let's, uh, let's just uh, think about the context here of where Revelation 19 tells us about this marriage feast of the Lamb. The, the context, this happens right after the Hallelujah Chorus uh, that, that, that came because uh, Mystery Babylon was judged by God. And so this, uh, the judgment of Babylon immediately precedes this uh, 
declaration of the wedding supper. And this declaration of the wedding supper comes right before the second coming of the Lord Jesus that happens in the verses right, uh, uh, right, right before it. Um, and so that, that we, we have to kind of keep, keep, keep that context in mind. Uh, but I think one uh, overall a, a principle in interpretation on how we interpret uh, what this means is that Scripture interprets Scripture. And a marriage motif, I think, is uh, found uh, quite uh, frequently in Scripture. It, 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 is, it is a prominent feature of Scripture, this marriage motif of a wedding celebration. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, Israel is seen as Yahweh's bride, as, as God's bride. In Isaiah 54, 5, he says, your maker is your husband. Uh, in Hosea 2, in verses 19 and 20, God says, I will betroth you to me forever, and I will betroth you in righteousness and in justice, in love and in compassion. In Ezekiel 16, in verse 8, God says, I gave you my solemn oath, and I entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Another great one in uh, Jeremiah 3 in verse 14, uh, God says, Return faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband and I will choose you. And so, so, you know, in the Old Testament you have this picture that Israel is God's bride. And when you come to the, to the New Testament, you find that the people of God there are also described as God's bride. The church is the bride, uh, is, is the, the, the bride of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 2, Paul says, I, I promised you to one husband, to Christ. And so the church uh, is the very bride of Christ. Uh, there's a remarkable and a mysterious uh, verse in, in, in uh, Ephesians chapter of 5 where uh, there we read that for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. And then he says, I think it's in verse 32, he says, And I tell you a great mystery, for I speak of Christ and the church. I mean, the whole teaching on marriage of between a, a man and a woman and, the, and the, the union that goes in the marital union, that is a picture of Christ and the church because the church is Jesus' bride. So, so in the Old Testament, Israel is seen as the bride of God. In the New Testament, the people of God, the church is seen as the bride of Christ. And in fact, in, in Revelation, we have uh, another definition of the bride of Christ, or we see these two kind of melded together. Look in Revelation 21, beginning in verse, uh, verse number 9. And here this bride is defined. Uh, the bride is mentioned in Revelation 19 in our passage. And then look in the verse 20, uh, chapter 21 and verse 9. Uh, and one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came to me and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain high and great, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, and it shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like the very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. And it had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. And on the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. And there were three gates on the east, and three on the north, and three on the south, and three on the west. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Isn't it interesting? He, you know, here uh, the bride of Christ is seen as the holy Jerusalem, uh, the, 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 this city. And the city is made up of, uh, you have a twelve, twelve gates that are the twelve 
the 12 patriarchs and the 12 tribes of Israel and the foundations of the city are the 12 apostles of uh, the 12 of, 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 of apostles of, of, of the lamb and this all forms the one body the one bride of Christ because the bride of Christ is one body it is the, uh, the, the redeemed Israel of the Old Testament and the redeemed church of the New Testament in our own age, one unified people and one unified city makes up the bride of Christ. Uh, in fact, let me read a, a, a passage in Ephesians chapter uh, 3 and verse number 6. Uh, where it says, this, is a myst- uh, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. And so they hear this uh, marriage m- uh, uh, motif of this bride and getting ready for the wedding supper of the Lamb. The bride is Israel of old, the, the church of the new, combined together in this great city who is the bride of Christ. Now, now, now some people try and uh, 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 make a distinction between the bride of Christ in this wedding supper of the Lamb and the guests that are invited in this blessing of those uh, who have been invited to the, the wedding supper. And they say the bride is just the church and the guests are the Old Testament saints. And so they make this distinction. And I, 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 I kind of uh, question that a, a little bit just, just on my own and in my own mind. Uh, I kind of see here our passage in Revelation 19 is probably just mixing metaphors as uh, uh, in, in verse uh, number 7 and 8, we, the redeemed people are seen as the bride. And in verse uh, number 9, we are seen uh, as those that are invited to, 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 to the wedding. Uh, just for your own information, you might look in uh, Mark chapter 2. And verse number 19, and there uh, Jesus refers to his apostles as the friends of the groom. Uh, Well, the apostles are part of the bride, but they're also... Uh, classified as friends of, of the groom. But, but overall, you, you just see this marriage motif of a bride, the people of God as the bride and those invited uh, to this, this wedding. Uh, there's a couple other uh, parables that I think uh, help us in interpreting uh, of, of, uh, how we look at this marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, one parable in Matthew chapter 22 in the first f- four, 14 verses, we see in this parable that a king is pre- preparing a marriage feast for his son. God is going to have a wedding for his son. And, and many people are invited, but, but a whole lot of them, maybe most of them, decline the invitation to come to this wedding feast that the king uh, has uh, prepared for his son. And then the, the king issues an order and all sorts of people are brought in so that his, his, his feast would be full. But, but one thing about this wedding supper is that pr- proper dress is required uh, to engage and to stay in the party. Uh, one guy was not dressed properly and so he was kicked out. And, and I, I think that kind of uh, helps us to interpret what we read here in Revelation chapter 19 in this marriage feast because attention is, is given to the bride and what she is wearing, wearing because she has fine linen, bright and clean. It was given to her to wear. And this fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. And so those who come and participate in this wedding supper of the Lamb have to be dressed properly. And, and, and the dress of the people of God has been mentioned several times here uh, in, uh, in, in Revelation. In Revelation 3.5, the, 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 the church of Sardis was going to be given new clothes, uh, white and clean. Uh, even the, the, the church of Laodicea was encouraged to buy from the Lord Jesus a, a, a clean, white, clean white clothes. Uh, the martyrs in uh, Revelation chapter 6 and, and in verse 11, after they had, had died for their testimony to the Lord Jesus, they were given clean white clothes. 
uh, the, the same of the great multitude that, that came out of, of the great tribulation in Revelation 7 and verse 9. They too had these clean white clothes. In fact, let me just read a one here in Revelation uh, 7 and verses 13 and 14. Uh, this is again being about the great multitude that came out of the great tribulation. And then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are those who came out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And so it seems that much emphasis is given to the attire of those that would attend this great wedding supper of the Lamb. Um, and one other a parable that I think is helpful in, in interpreting what this marriage supper of the Lamb is, is a, a parable in Matthew chapter 25. Uh, of uh, the uh, um, the parable of the, the the ten the ten virgins, and in this parable we see that the bridegroom, the groom that was going to get married, he he had gone away and he stayed away a long time. That that these these ten virgins were were waiting for the the marriage ceremony to happen, but it it almost seemed to be delayed, and it went on and on, and and they were wondering when would the groom show up, and 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 so from. From that parable, I think that, that we can learn that there is a wedding, but we don't know when it's going to happen. I mean, when we have uh, uh, weddings in our culture, uh, typically, uh, typically invitations are sent out and a save the date. There is a date put on the calendar on when the wedding is going to happen. But here at this wedding of celebration, at this marriage supper, we know it's going to happen, but we don't know when the date is. And uh, the point of the parable is we just need to be ready for the party whenever it happens because the bridegroom will come and then the wedding celebration will commence. And once the wedding celebration commences, there is no more second chances uh, for those who did not come to this wedding celebration. So, so that's just a little bit on, on maybe how do we interpret uh, some of this, uh, this uh, wedding celebration of the Lamb. We, 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 we know that there, there is a bride. We know that, that God has prepared this celebration for His Son. Uh, but we don't know when it's going to happen, but we know that it is going to happen that it is going to, going to happen. And so, so let me just move past this a little bit from the interpretation or the interpretive elements to the anticipation of this great wedding supper of the Lamb. And, and I think this is probably the main point of this marriage motif in Revelation chapter 19. And, and the main point is, is I think it is here to engender within us an eager anticipation for this monumentous event and celebration of the marriage supper of the Lamb. I mean, the, the, the book of the Revelation is very clear that, that history is on course for a judgment. A judgment is sure to come, but that is not the only message of the book of the Revelation. It also teaches us that history is also on course for a wedding celebration. There is going to be a party above all parties, and we are to eagerly anticipate uh, its uh, soon coming and us being able to join in this celebration. Uh, I mean, for, for those of you that are married, I mean, were, were you eager and excited about your wedding and when it was planned and you know when it was going to happen and there was almost this this anticipation building and maybe you know a countdown to the date of, of you know you know when uh, when uh, the, this this marriage is going to get get kicked off I mean I, I remember uh, uh, when I was about ready to, to be engaged and I just I, I was fretting and I just knew that the second coming was going to happen before the marriage happened because you know I, I, I I didn't want to miss out on the marriage. I just had this, this anticipation. I wanted to get married. I had prayed for a wife for a long time, and the, and the Lord answered my prayer. And, and there was this anticipation and eagerness waiting for the celebration 
of a marriage. I mean, brides anticipate the day of the wedding. There was a lot of planning that goes on by the friends and the brides and the guests that are invited. They order their schedules around the time of the wedding celebration. And when the time happens, people get dressed up in their Sunday go to meet and clothes. And they're all ready for the special occasion. They're ready for the celebration and for the party. And I think Revelation chapter 19 and verses 7 to 9 is here to cause eager anticipation within the people of God, anticipating this marriage celebration, just waiting for this party above all parties. And you know, sometimes I think we do fight over the details of end time of events and how do you interpret this and how do you interpret that. And, and sometimes we can kind of go at each other when maybe we interpret things a, a little, little bit differently. Uh, but do you know that, that God has told us of the future and of the end times, not so that we can fight over it, but so that we can encourage one another through it. In 1 Thessalonians 4.18, after after, Paul is is talking about the rapture of the church, and he says, we need to encourage one another with these things. When Christ comes and we're received to him and we we are going to join in this wedding celebration, these uh, topics are meant so that we could encourage one another for this great celebration that is going to happen. There is a destination wedding that is planned and we are invited and going to participate in this awesome wedding supper of the Lamb. And and as the redeemed people of God, from one uh, facet of this, we can look at it that that we are the bride. And and as the bride of Christ, as the bride longs to see her groom and so it is with us, as Peter tells us, that though we have not seen him, we, we love him. We haven't seen him yet, but oh, we anticipate that day to where we will see him as he is. And we will see him face to face. And oh, that, that eager anticipation for that day and to see that sight. And, and a bride longs not only to see her groom, but, but, but she longs to be united with her groom. The, 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 and marriage and the marital union is such a, a great and a potent illustration of Christ and the church. Marriage and the marriage ce- celebration and all the, the, the joy and the love and the intimacy that goes into that is a picture of Christ's love for his church, as well as the celebratory nature of the relationship that we have with him. And so, so, so from one aspect, we, we are the bride yearning for, 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 for this union. But in, a, in another facet of this, as the redeemed people of God, we are, the, we are the invited guests that are invited to join in this celebration of the consummation of the ages. I mean, weddings are a time where, where everybody get, you know, get, gets together and there's a great family reunion going on. And the marriage supper of the Lamb, the wedding supper of the Lamb, is going to be the party of all parties. I mean, you know, celebrate good times. Come on. I mean, th- this is what I think is, is put here t- so that we can anticipate and yearn for this blowout of a party that we are invited to. It's why why the angel gives this beatitude. He says, blessed are all of those that are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And these are the true words of God. I mean, we, we have the invitation of all invitations. And, and, and so here in the midst of this book of the Revelation where there was so much judgment and there's horror going on and the persecution of the saints and, and then here right after the, the, the destruction of, of Babylon we have this bright spot. Remember that a wedding is coming and about to happen. 
And so I think that the part of the, of the, the reason for, for this and the purpose for this so that we can be reminded as the people of God that in the midst of all our problems, we are to anticipate the party that is to come. After all of the judgments that, 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 that fall upon the earth and even the, the difficulties for the, for, for the people of God, we are to remember that a wedding will happen. History is on course for judgment, but history is also on course for a great wedding celebration. These verses are here for hope because there is hope in the midst of the horror for the people of God. And that hope comes in this wedding celebration, this marriage supper of the Lamb. And so that's just, uh, I think, a little bit on, on the anticipation that I, that I, I think we, we should have. But, but let me just end here uh, with, a, with a stark distinction here because I, I think this is something that that we need uh, to, to look at and it needs to be pointed out. Because in Revelation chapter 19, there are not just one great supper mentioned, but there, is two, there are two great suppers mentioned here in Revelation 19. And I think that we are meant to notice them and to, 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 to compare them and to see the distinction. In our passage today, in verses 7 to 9, we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. When you go down to verses 17 to 21, and you'll see another supper. There is the great supper of God. Uh, an invitation is given to attend both of these suppers. Uh, to the invitation for the marriage supper uh, of the Lamb, that invitation goes, goes to believers as we are invited to, to come and to join in this celebration. Uh, this, other, this other supper, an invitation is given not to people, but to birds, for birds to come and to gorge themselves uh, on uh, the rebels against God. One of these suppers is a great feast of celebration. The other supper is a great fight and damnation. One supper is for believers. The other supper is for the birds. And do you know what stands in the middle of these two great suppers? One great celebration and one great damnation. What stands right in the middle of these two great suppers is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He stands right in the middle of these two contrasting uh, suppers. In, in verses 11 to 16, we have the second coming of Christ right between the marriage supper of the Lamb and the great supper of God. And here the Lord Jesus Christ, it, it's like, once again, He is the one like when He was on the middle cross. And you remember when he hung upon the middle cross the, that the one on his right hand, the thief on his right hand was saved, but the thief on his left hand was damned. And, and, and whether there was saved in celebration or, 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 or damnation, it all depended upon the one's relationship to the, to the person on the middle cross. And you know, it is your relationship to the one in the middle, the one right in the middle of this marriage supper of the Lamb and the great supper of God, the one who is on the middle cross. It is your relationship to him that makes all the difference. And do you know that the, that the great message here in Revelation 19 is you can join the wedding celebration and you can be saved Today, today is the day of salvation. And just like the repentant thief, and he said, Lord, remember, remember me. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. And he enters into the celebration. You can join the wedding celebration and be saved today, or you can continue in rebellion and refuse to repent, and you can keep your invitation to the great supper of God, the other supper that is mentioned here in, in Revelation chapter 19. You can have an invitation to one, 
or an invitation to the other. And, and do, you, do you know that, that a gospel invitation invites you to change what supper you are invited to? I mean, that's the, that's the great good news of the gospel because you can exchange damnation for celebration. You can exchange the great supper of God that's literally for the birds, for the wedding supper of the Lamb. You can exchange an invitation to wrath for an invitation to a wedding. Oh, I mean, on this day, on, on this Lord's Day, won't you respond with repentance for a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today? And you know, it, it is a relationship. It is, it is like a wedding where, where vows are exchanged and a relationship is, is entered into and a lifelong, eternal long relationship is begun. Oh, I pray that on this day uh, you have the joy in your heart of anticipating the great marriage supper of the Lamb, and that you have a relationship with the Lamb, the, 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 the bridegroom and the husband of the church, and that you long to see him on that great and glorious day when he comes and then we enter into such a celebration. Well, I hope you have a, a blessed day on this day, uh, and I hope that you eagerly anticipate this celebration that is to come. Well, goodbye, and the Lord willing, we will meet soon.